Hi! In this video we are going to demonstrate how to use quick surface and create a hybrid reverse engineering in a simple and efficient way. Hybrid objects are objects which are created with the standard primitives like the one on the screen but also they have shapes which are modified by hand or in a very complex way that the traditional methods struggle to reconstruct. Our first step will be to create the main body. I'm going to use the 2D sketch command. With the 2D sketch command I'm trying just to extract the profile of the big body. Once I have my reference points created I'm going to reconstruct my sketch. I'm going to use extract primitives which is tool that allows the user to create different shapes just by brushing over onto the scan point. Just hold the mouse down and pane and this will create the lines in this case. Strategically for this project I'm extracting only the lines and then later I will just intersect and connect them. Once I extracted them, I can move back to the main sketch. I'm going to use the command which is called auto join that automatically will intersect the close uh, lines. In this case, I need to create some fillets, so I'm going to use the corner trim command and we'll select the auto fillet option. I will just brush over the corners and the software automatically will detect what is the radius based on the scan data that we have. Once I'm happy with this, I can just go back. My profile is created and I can press OK, showing the mesh for us as a reference. Next step would be to create the extruded body. There are two handles that will help me just to drag and change the shape. I intentionally create the top one way more because I will be intersecting it with the plane but at the bottom I need just to put this lower level to my scan data. In order to do this I'm using the snapping command. The snapping command allows you when you pick the handle automatically to pick points from the reference mesh. This makes sure that my bottom plane is perfectly snapped to the original scan data. I created my first body and will hide it for now. I'm going to extract this plane here by using the extract primitives. We use the magic wand and using the slider I can play with the sensitivity so I have enough points that will define my plane. Once I'm ready I just press the button for fit play. If you notice here the software is set to have an auto constraint which means that because it's closer than one degree, it's automatically made this plane perpendicular to the CX plane. To demonstrate the quality, I will just turn off the auto constraint and I'll get the best fit. And I will click on the analysis to see how close this plane is to the scan data. If I leave this as it is now, this will have a perfect and the best possible way to fit the scan data. But because we are doing design intent, perhaps the idea here is for the manufacturing that this plane is perfectly perpendicular to our site plane. That's why I'll just turn on the out constraint and you see that it's a little bit tilted. This might be because of the original part is not being manufactured correctly. I'm ready and press OK. We'll enable my previous solid body and we'll use our command which is the trimming command. Click on the plane, hold control key and select the other object. You can click on the command which is on the quick dialog or you can just pick it from the main menu. This is a mutual trimming which means the shapes are self-intersected and just by clicking I can just remove the shape that I'm not needed. As you can see the software automatically found that this is a solid body so I can press OK. This was just the basic creation of the primitive section. 
Now we will be moving to the next step where we want to create this free form. What I need to do at the moment is just to separate and stay focused on this shape and for this reason I'm going to use the edit scan command. This will allow me to select the area. Again I'm using the magic one selection which is based on curvature. But here I also need to take these shapes into account. So I'm going to use the brush and make sure that the select tool is turned off. In order to make sure that everything is properly selected and we don't have these small triangles, what we can do is just enlarge the selected area and it automatically will just select the other shapes. But also we need to pay attention on the corners because it goes a little bit off on the fillet so we can shrink the currently selected area. As we have now our area pre-selected, I can just close this. We are going to our automatic surfacing command. And as you can see, because we have selected area, it automatically suggested to us that this will work only onto the pre-selected shape. Because we have a boundary here, which may not be perfect, I'm going to select the option which is called Improve Whole Boundary, so you can get a better result. There are two options that you need to take into account, which you generally, with how many small squares you need to interpolate this shape and then how complex your details are. In this case, I'll just leave the feature details to balanced. Once I have this ready to go, I just press the preview so I can get the software to generate this automatic surfacing. You may just need to increase the feature details to higher if you get a shape like this one, so you don't need to reprocess them later. The higher the feature details are set, the more closer to the underline as you get. You can always just press the deviation analyzer and you can see the quality. I'm happy with this for now, I can just press OK. The good thing is that you can always just go and edit this automatic surfacing. And what I can do here, as you saw, my tolerance is a bit high, so I'm not really close to the underlying shape. I can then use the increase resolution command to get this shape much closer to the underlying uh, scan data. I'm happy with the result, but there is a next step that I need to take in order to connect the two shapes, which you remember I created as a prismatic shape, and now we have this free form. I will unselect the mesh so I can see better. What we can do now is going to edit our free form shape will show our solid and we'll right click on it and make it transparent so you can see better. My goal now is just to select the whole boundary. One option is you just double click and it selects this edge and holding control you can double click on the next one and on the next one so you can get the full rounded boundary selected. The other option is, if you just go and select the option which is called Boundary, this will make sure that when I click, the whole boundary will be selected. The reason that I selected this boundary is because I want to offset them to my other reference geometry. I'm going to use the command which is called Offset Boundary to a Surface. The software will take this boundary, will search for the surfaces created, will project them to the new surfaces, but also you may say that you may want a little bit extra distance. The main idea of this extra distance is that this will be a little bit above with the amount you specified, which is one millimeter in this case. And this will allow us to go to the next step. I'm happy with this now and I can press OK. We are ready to go to the final step, which is trimming of the two shapes to complete the project. I'll just drag with the rectangular selection to have both 
automatic surfacing and the trim surface selected and we'll go to our trim command. As you can see now the two shapes have been colored and what I need to do is just clicking to remove the surfaces that I don't need it. You can just zoom and press on this shape. As you can see the software automatically analyzes if we created a solid body. In this case it's confirmed and I can press OK. The software is ready and we have our final cut model which is a combination of the completely freeform shape and a prismatic shape which is suitable for manufacturing. Then you can just export this as a normal step file and you can put it into your next level for use. I hope this basic introduction was good enough. Thank you for watching.